Hey there, everybody. Welcome to beautiful Mackinac Island. We are going to be touring through two of my absolute favorite cottage gardens today. We have Hollyhock Cottage and Edgecliff. We're going to go up through one and down through the other. This is going to be absolutely awesome. Let's dive in. So like I said, this is Hollyhock Cottage, named after the iconic blooms that have always historically come reaching right out of this white picket fence and these stunning fuchsia colored hollyhocks are looking absolutely peak form right now. <clears throat> so we'll step right in. Some of my crew is here. We'll probably catch up to them in the back. So as you can see, they've just fresh mowed the lawn. It's looking great. Uh, but this one, wow. Hollyhock Cottage underwent a tremendous transformation. About six years or so now, we dove into this one and it was dramatically different. As you'll see, we'll, we'll uh, put some photos up of before and afters as we go through these tours. Um, but this one was, you know, very, very, very different. And the, the owners came up to me and said, you know, Jack, we're thinking about uh, adding on and putting an addition on the house. And at the same time that we do that, we want to, you know, make sure that we're doing the landscaping so that the place looks really good as fast as possible. And we have the gardens looking really, really good, you know, right kind of in conjunction with all of the construction and, and renovation work. So a, a large team of us, all contractors, got together to dream this one up. And there was no landscape drawing or anything like that. It was all completely, you know, kind of off the cuff. And uh, we were literally shaping this one as we went and as we dug in. Right off the bat, you can see it's just incredible architecture and the classic casky kind of gingerbread Victorian details there with the stars. Caskey was an architect who actually was the original architect of the Grand Hotel. And he also designed and built this original small cottage here, which as you'll see, doubled in size with the addition. So the first thing to note is all the impressive stone walls throughout this entire landscape. We brought in over 275 tons of stone to build this landscape. All the wall stone is out of uh, Wisconsin. This is all Eden wall stone. Um, it's known as a weathered face wall stone and granite boulders. All this stuff is just absolutely stunning. And the limestone is in the same geologic vein as Mackinac Island. So as it's patinaing out and weathering, it matches and looks like a lot of the limestone that we have here on the island. So as we peel back in through into the garden here, you'll see these little stairs that we wove up through here. And all of this before was just a you know, a big slope that was really difficult to mow and everything else. So by shaping into here and forcing some of these tiers in, we've created some really, really neat little pockets. Like I said, the guys just came through and mowed. So these haven't been put down quite yet, but uh, these beautiful chairs offer this awesome view out to the Mackinac Bridge and the Straits of Mackinac and carriages going by. And none of this was here at all. So we created all these little new spaces and really dramatically changed the landscape while the home and cottage were being worked on. So here you can see the addition. It's note, noted by the different siding and different windows that had to be done to make sure that uh, it could always be noted in the future where the original cottage was and where the addition is. So they weren't even allowed to match the original trim uh, and, and original siding and everything like that so that this could architecturally always be identified as the original cottage. Now all of this siding was redone and the windows and everything were redone during this renovation, but it still had to be done differently to show 
the difference between the, the, the old and the new. The reason it had to be all redone is when we started on this project, this entire back corner of the original cottage was buried in dirt and mud. This whole hillside that we're now retaining with all this stone and boulders was just burying the back of this cottage. There was no retention. The cottage had really just been let go for many, many years and it was all rotted out. We could reach in and grab handfuls of rotten like wood foundation. So it really needed the love that it got. And so during the excavation for this addition, we had obviously set some big equipment in here to dig out for the foundation work. And while those guys were here, we took advantage of it and set some of these largest boulders. Some of these big, big four foot monster granite boulders are probably, you know, a good 2000 pounds a piece. And so all of these largest boulders were set during that time. And as you can see, this wall is really very, very steep. And all these boulders had to be strategically placed and set in order to retain all of this and allow for this addition, you know, to happen. As soon as we got around the steepest part of the corner, we were able to work our walls back in and get this wall style going again with the dry stack stonework. All this is dry stack. Again, no mortar or cement work at all. All this was all cut in and stacked by hand. All of this done by hand. The um, stone staircase here. Oh, let me show you guys over on this side of the, the house too, because this walkway is really, really stunning. This before when we first started, this was just a, a dirt path with some like treated four by four steps that kind of went down through the dirt and it worked. It was cottagey. It was totally fine for the way the cottage was. But obviously with a big renovation like this and a tune up and a clean up architecturally and everything that they did inside, the landscape needed to match and complement. So this walkway got totally reimagined and we did this really beautiful running bond pattern with this sand molded clay brick and feature a lot of really great shade perennials. Look at the way this Japanese painted fern is just glowing right now in and amongst the ivy and the myrtle. This lady fern here looking absolutely beautiful in all her glory there and hostas. And again, that same wall style, just kind of picking up to tie the whole property together. And in just the five or six years since we built all this, you can see it's really patinaing out beautiful and getting all kinds of mossiness on it which I totally love. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, yeah, this is all looking great. The Bruneras are all looking stunning right now. And a garden like this, where we just really load it up with ground covers and mixed perennials, has such good interest, spring, summer, and fall, and really doesn't require a tremendous amount of maintenance. We can just let it go, let things keep coming and going. And then, you know, in the fall, we got to come and cut all this stuff back. All this herbaceous growth, you know, has to get cut back and composted, but it'll all be right back next year without a problem. Um, so this stone staircase that goes up through the property, again, none of this was here at all. The, this entire bank and stone wall that we put in was about 30 feet further in. We had to dig out 2,000 yards of material to be able to shape all this and allow for the addition. That's 200 dump trucks full of material to be able to do this project. And in doing so, we shaped all these tiers and kind of created this whole space. And while we had that equipment and machinery here, we set, like I said, we set all these largest boulders. And for quite a while, all the boulders were set back here and we we didn't have time or you know we had the whole rest of the island to plant up and and a lot of other things to do so for a while it was just boulders on this big hillside going down and people thought oh jack what are you doing you know what are you thinking what are you dreaming up here uh because it was hard for people to see but i knew that 
but I could shape these tiers and really create all these cool spaces back here. And I could see it, you know, with the lighting in and everything like that, just looking absolutely magical back here. And so in time, when we got more time and got into the back of the property here and started building and shaping all these walls by hand, it really started to take shape. We were planting some of these big trees while we were building the walls, like this big clump birch here, beautiful amelanchier there, and a really cool tree that you guys got to see here. So up here, there's this big tree. I'll walk out over here. But see this big tree up here. That big tree is a Katsura tree. And that was planted up there knowing that eventually that's going to have like a huge, you know, 60 foot canopy and it's going to outlive this Amalankir tree and it's going to outlive that birch tree. And that's totally fine. The idea being that Katsura will eventually just drape over this whole patio space and this will continue to be this beautiful mixed shady garden here. You can see the Pachysandra is super, super happy. Simisifusia is sending up its late summer blooms. These will be big white spire blooms there. Black lace Sambucus. This is a great plant. Look at that texture and color out of this thing. And we just keep these things whacked back a little bit, but you really can't hurt them. Just chopping at them a little bit to keep their shape and size down so that you can still see in through there and see those beautiful astilbes poking up there. And it's all about making sure those little viewports are all looking great. Ah, oh, look at all this astilbe back here, blooming in like peak, peak form right now. So pretty. So in through the back gate here now, um, on the back of this property, the back of all the West Bluff properties is where the carriage houses are. And traditionally, these carriage houses would have, you know, housed carriages and their horses and the paddocks and stuff behind and the horses live in there and um, and the caretakers quarters are above and several of these west bluff uh, cottages still maintain that mackinaw historic integrity and in keeping the use and uh, and just that historic nature of these properties alive this is one of them as well as edge cliff so i'm going to take this debris that i cut as we were walking here real quick and throw it on this dray. And a dray like that is set here so that we can throw all of our lawn waste, all of our grass clippings and stuff like that can go up on there. It all gets mixed in with the island's manure, mixed in with all the hotel food scraps, all those food scraps from all the you know restaurants and everything like that are all shredded up and they make this beautiful Mackinac Island black gold compost. It's a great product. It's sold back to all of us gardeners and all of us Mackinac Islanders at a great price. And we're able to use it for all these gardens and landscapes. So um, just continually feeding the, uh, the gardens of the future. Here we've got a manure bin there. Not really all that attractive, but to me, that is future black garden goodness. And I know that it will really feed and, uh, and nourish the, um, the gardens of the future. So real quickly here, we'll just look over at Edgecliff's paddock and, uh, and their barn and everything here. Um, I wish you guys could smell the smells right now of these horses. There's a really, really sweet little pony over there saying hi to some folks that are visiting on the fence line there.
Rockside Edge Cliff here. Features some beautiful colorful pockets as the entryway into the back of the cottage. The, uh, the circle drive that goes in traditionally and historically would have been used for cottages to be able to, or cottagers to be able to pull in, be picked up for dinner, taken downtown or, you know, to the Grand Hotel for dinner and drop back off in the back of the cottage. Oftentimes the front of the cottage wasn't necessarily used unless there were guests or something like that where it was a little bit more showy. But the back of the cottage, just like any of our homes, is where you're always coming and going. It's where the mud room is. Same thing up here, but just a little different take on it. So we'll jump right into Edge Cliff here. Uh, gosh, these nonstop begonias are looking so stunning right now. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color there and the combination with those variegated, beautiful hostas and the big bank or brunera behind it. As you can see, some of the guys are here working away, which is awesome, getting the lawn mowed and tuned right up. This last year, the, the client or the owner here at Edgecliff wanted a hedge of hollyhocks. And so we planted up a whole bunch of hollyhocks and they've come in this year absolutely beautiful and uh, they look absolutely stunning. We've got 30 hollyhocks planted in there. They look awesome. This is a cool little feature I like to point out. We've been putting a lot of these into uh, landscapes recently. This is a little pondless waterfall system from Aquascapes. Um, aquascapes.com i'm pretty sure is their website they're awesome guys and they'll send you a whole kit everything you need um, and they've got some great tutorial videos and everything online on how to do it um, but this is a recirculating system here very easy to put together and maintain um, we built this one uh, about four years ago or so now it's got some little lights in it and and it's a really neat feature this little corner right here used to have nothing at all it was just kind of some weedy mess under this cedar tree. And the, the limbs of this cedar were much, much lower. We limbed it right up and forced this, you know, really neat little feature in here. And it echoes all through the house at night, which is really a cool um, idea that the, the owners just love. We'll walk up on the porch so you can see the gardens from above and uh, appreciate them in all their glory. And uh, take a look at this absolutely magical view here from a West Bluff cottage. Now one thing to note is that these tiered gardens here that we're looking down on in the gardens of Edgecliff here and in the gardens of the neighboring cottage and many of these West Bluff um, cottages they have these tiered gardens going up the sides of the cottages and what those were for traditionally is kind of bedroom view so the windows on the sides of the cottage that didn't necessarily have a view of the the water would be able to look down at these tiered gardens and have a nice view of some color and be able to appreciate you know um, those those tiered plantings and so you'll see as you're walking up the west bluff maybe this evening or something you'll see a lot of that at several of these West Bluff cottages. And that's really what that was all about is planting uh, for, the, for the bedrooms to be able to look down. And as we come around here and look out and appreciate this absolutely stunning view of the Straits of Mackinac, it's hard not to point out the just majestic Mackinac bridge the bridge being five miles long when it was built was the largest suspension bridge in the world it is now the largest in the western hemisphere um, and really an impressive feat of engineering in fact 75 percent of the bridge is underwater tremendous amount of concrete and steel work had to be done dealing with the elements and the weather in the straits of mackinac pumping all that water out as they poured concrete and did all that hundreds and hundreds of feet below uh, sea level. It's just an incredible work um, to, uh, to imagine being able to um, put that together. Every time I drive across it, I marvel at that. Um, but as you can see here, looking out, the theme for this year was pink and white for sure. 
the owner absolutely loves pink and white and the the just kind of soft nature of that color combination looks really really pretty the mirrored effect of this walkway going down and the mirrored planting going down kind of complements the architecture as you'll see as soon as we get down there and turn back up and look at all this and i see here she's got the best book ever written on gardens unbelievable the gardens of Mackinac island that was not planted there i promise you they literally just happened to love that book that yours truly wrote about the gardens of Mackinac island look at this monarch butterfly here on this meteor shower verbena banariensis verbena is a a butter, this is a butterfly magnet plant. Uh, in the summertime, you know, on a warm afternoon, walking down this walkway, there might be a dozen, 20, 30 butterflies just fluttering around off of these guys. And the Gardens of the Grand feature this plant quite a bit as well. Mackinac Island is a great stopping point in one of the main migratory uh, routes for monarch butterflies. So we get to enjoy these guys pretty much for the whole entire month of August. It's a real treat to be able to walk you guys through these. I love being able to take the time to show you some of these stunning gardens. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Let's go check out some more Mackinac Island Gardens.